Welcome back to the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BOL, alongside site publisher Tim Watts. And Tim, a lot to talk about on this latest edition of T. Watts and TR. We've got some Nate Oates discussion that we're going to get into. Certainly an A-Day preview seems appropriate at this point. Less than, well, I guess a little more than 48 hours away from the annual uh, contesting of the A-Day game at Brian Denny Stadium. We'll also get into some A-Day memories maybe that you have from some of these spring games of the past. But we got to start with this shirt, man. You know what this shirt means, right? Other than I don't have good taste in shirts, which is I'm sure what you were about to say. You know what this shirt signifies, don't you? Uh, impending death. <laughs> you have given up on life. Your wife has left you. The kids don't love you. <laughs> You got dressed in the dark. You just are goes on a, and on. This is a, my master shirt, my man. Okay, okay. I didn't know y'all did it that way. This is my yeah. master's hoodie. That's how we roll. This on is Masters how I roll. Thursday. Master's Day. Travis well, got this master. Energy. Jordan Brand's hard to beat. Jordan Brand it, is uh, it's legit. But Travis uh, has the master energy, so it's going to be a long show oh, for me today. Little rain delay up there in Augusta. Weather my delay. Woke me up with it. Mona's yeah. son walks in, tells me his five picks to click and a sleeper. I was like, oh, what? I didn't even tell him anything. I like your son. We can hang. He, He's he a golfer I. now. We were uh, yeah. in the basement. I was doing a little working out. He came in, and he was doing those funky workouts where he had the golf club. And he was, yeah. Yeah. I said, you are not. Core work. I said, you're doing the opposite of what I'm doing. You know, they got those up there at Augusta National. It's almost like playing golf in a dome because that place is so pimped out in terms of <laughs> Good comment here from Jamie M. He's letting me have it right off the front. Is Travis trying to pollinate B O L L O L? Damn it, Jamie. I mean, I, I mean, kind of like the look. I kind of like the look. But uh, okay. they got this. They've got a sub air system under the turf at the golf club up there, so they can dry that place out. They can get it ready to go. Uh, your guy Dustin Johnson. You're on record as uh, DJ being your pick. He was set to go at one central. That'll be pushed back a little bit, but we are going to have. I have Masters. not heard his name mentioned, which makes me even more secure that I've nailed this. And I want it's everybody to understand that sees this. It's your guy. My first golf adventure, I nailed the winner. Travis' life is going to be miserable. <laughs> his life will be miserable. I'll never have anything on you. You know, it'd be kind of like Auburn's final four. You know, they had that final four. On Alabama, and then they won't him. let Auburn have anything. That hurt them that, that night when Alabama won the oh, won that elite geez. elite eight game. Oh, that was that, that was hurt a tough him. one. Um, so let's get into it because you know we talk about some hoops and kind of lost and not really lost because you had your national championship game played on Monday night. I think we both were in agreement that that was UConn's game to lose. It certainly played out that way. Yeah. But so much of the talk right up until tip-off was Nate Oates, Kentucky. How was that situation going to play out just before tip-off late Monday night? Because that was a late tip. We get word from both Nate Oates and Athletics Director Greg Byrne that Nate Oates is, remains solid to the Alabama men's basketball program. And then as we learned in the following days, it's not just Nate Oates that makes this continued commitment to Alabama, which is huge, but the administration led by Greg Byrne continues to pour into Alabama men's basketball. Here about a month ago, Nate got an extension, came with an $18 million buyout. But I know through our reporting, it sounds like Alabama is going to continue to pour into that program, maybe – in the form of even a more advanced facility for the program. Yeah. Before I get into Nate, I want to show you one of the reasons I love sports, right? So the SMU coach coaching job opened up. So the USC coach went there and the dominoes from SMU went all the way to the university of Kentucky, literally went from SMU all the way around to the university of Kentucky. We don't even know where it's going to end. We don't even know where this thing's going to end, who Kentucky's going to get, but um, amazing that we got here so quick and have seen guys leave in Cal for Arkansas. Could not believe that. Uh, really found it a little bit hard to figure out must to USC. I mean, I get it, you know, when I look at it deep, but yeah, Dragon Oats into it, his name popped up and um, the university's obviously all behind him. The fan base, we've never seen, I mean, you and I are basketball guys. We've never seen the fan base this this rabid, I mean, you know, 40% of the discussion on the round table, the Bama online message board is basketball. 
um, and good basketball discussion. But yeah, I think you heard with Oates, you know, I think he was able to capitalize on that final four run because the boosters have stepped up as well. I mean, you need a lot of things to fall in place. You need the NIL. You want the small things. You want raises for your assistants. He wanted a practice facility um, and all those things. And yeah, didn't get any hesitation. Now leading up, yeah, leading up to that game, there was a and little you know, bit. You of, know what you didn't mention there though, Tim, in that, that list? You didn't mention a new arena, which we have said no. time and time again here. If yeah. he's happy with his facility, if he's happy with NIL, Nate Oates is going to be happy at Alabama. I and, honestly think a lot of that comes from Auburn has a new facility, so the fans sure. want one because they want one because Auburn has one, which I get. But I don't think, totally. like you've discussed, I think there's other things Nate Oates wants, especially a healthy NIL. That's <laughs> that's how he's going to win, um, especially considering that's the majority of recruiting now. It's not, hey, look at our facilities anymore. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that that moment leading up to it, Kentucky reached out. When that started spreading a little bit, the panic set in. And I was sitting here like, if this goes all night, if this goes all night, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be off and running with the stuff. But when Nate hit that, you know, that that tweet, um, you know, and Greg followed it up quickly. It was a big moment. But, yeah, it sounds like, Nate, you know, the first thing we've heard and we've always told is he has daughters in school. They're happy in Tuscaloosa. They're not in some rush to move. Um it's pretty comfortable for them there. They've pretty comfortable for them there. And he's got a lot of, you know, he's got high expe expectations for himself, but the final four, you know, I mean, that alone just, you know, the sweet 16 had us in, you know, the, the entire fan base was excited about the sweet 16. So the final four with the roster coming back, the NIL, I think he got everything out of it that he should have got a final four run. He deserved everything that he asked for was within reason, you know, you know, I saw people using the word demand. I don't think there was a demand. I don't think there's a demand relationship. I think there's a discussion of what he wants, what he needs, and Alabama tries to meet it. Yeah, Greg Byrne at his core is a basketball guy too, right? So I, I agree. I don't think it was a situation with maybe some previous 80s at Alabama where a basketball guy would have to go in there and stand on the table after making it to a Final Four to get everything he wants in that moment. And absolutely, Nate Oates has the hammer right now, and you have to use it. You have to maximize it. And it's not only going to be a great thing for Nate Oates and what he's going to continue to try to do at UA beyond Nate Oates, like Nick Saban. You know, now that Nick Saban's gone, the, 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 the situation's in great shape in a large part because Nick didn't sit still on facilities or things like that. And the beneficiary of that should be Kalen DeBoer. Now, I got to think Nate Oates, if he wants to be at Alabama at his age, has got a long, long time still in front of him. Uh, sure. But big picture-wise, it makes sense. And again, I think Greg Byrne gets that more so as a basketball guy. Uh, he certainly understands the importance of football. That's not to say he doesn't. Uh, but this all sort of came together at the right time, too, Tim, I think, in terms of administration and who Nate Oates works for, who hired Nate Oates. And at the end of the day, you are now an elite basketball program. You are a Final Four program, and your facilities and your everyday uh, sort of walk of life in that regard needs to match up with that. I think some people are going to have trouble with the 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 blue bloods is kind of diminished a little bit by the NIL because you can now buy your way into the club, right? You can skip to the front of the line to be a blue blood because you can get elite players. You can get elite talent. So not every coach is going to run to the biggest name. Now, Kentucky, don't get me wrong. We understand exactly what Kentucky is. It's to, you know, to me, it's the epicenter of the, you know, the college basketball world. Um, and has been my whole life. So I'm not doubting that at all, but not everybody is in a rush to run out there. And I mean, that was a, there was a heated, you know, a heated discussion with, you know, some, you know, some of the fans on the round table saying he's gone. If he gets the offer, he gets the interest, but that just wasn't the case. I mean, and of course the semantics of who got an offer, there's not really turned downs anymore. Like there used to be, there used to be, I'm off, you know, we'd see a, you know, you know, I think Arkansas football alone ended that with the Sam Pittman hire because they were vocalizing who they offered and they were vocalizing. I turned it down. So, I mean, you don't want to get turned down. You kind of like, you know, you send your friend to the girl at lunch to make sure she's going to say yes before you ask her to prom. Now, I think that's how you do the coaching searches as well. You know, those uh, promposals 
back in the day, we used to pass notes in class. I'm sure you guys used to do the same thing. I always made sure, Tim, to include maybe, you know, just maybe, not just yes and yeah. no, but a maybe in there. Yeah. You know, that was the easy, that was always the soft landing. But yeah, absolutely, big stretch here for Alabama men's basketball. Only looks more promising moving forward. Let me ask you this. We did also learn earlier in the week that Chris Parker, the redshirt guard, apparently is going to hit the transfer portal. Now, when you look at that and you consider also there are a handful of these guys for Alabama still have to make a decision about next season. Yeah. Did you take that as a negative? Obviously, Chris, a talented young player, going to be a good player for somebody. But did you also think, hey, maybe this could mean that some of these guys are more than what I expected anyway, are going to come back for another year. Well, I think Chris was probably heading it out anyways when you looked at it. I mean, he red shirted, you know, trying to, you know, trying to develop him. And, you know, again, this was a heated discussion as well. Why would you red shirt him? Well, sometimes there's, you know, when you recruit, it's high risk, high reward. They don't always work out, but the guy is a tremendous talent. Um, I trust Nate Oates knows what's best for these players. I mean, I don't think, you know, I mean, they, Going into the final four, they saw uh, he put out his uh, practice video, the old practice video, the old practice video. And we had some put him in the NBA Hall of Fame based on that and take his red shirt off and play in the final four. And Nate Oates didn't have a guy that could help them beat UConn sitting on the bench red shirting. That just that's just not happening, though. But I'm not I mean, we heard, you know, pretty much middle of the season. There's a good chance he was moving on and um I do think it's because, I mean, the roster, again, the roster could com completely flip over. You got Mark Sears, you got Grant Nelson, you got Rylan, you got so many guys making a decision. I mean, only Estrada is out of eligibility. And also you have a huge class coming in. I mean, a big time class with Darian Reed and Aiden Sherrell, who are five-star McDonald's All-Americans, really excited about them. And Houston uh, Mallet. I don't know if I said that right. You already got him. Sure. And Nas and Nas Cunningham, who we're not even talking about. Nas is kind of that Chris Parker mold when you look at the size and the and and the uh, and the uh, playing ability. And he was previous number one player in this class at one point. Just didn't have a great senior uh, a summer before his senior year and senior year, but certainly has the talent there. So you got that plus all the portal guys being in, mentioned. And I can tell you this: Alabama is going to be one of those teams people are looking at to play in the portal, right? They're going to look at a team. It's a hot team. Um, obviously, UConn is going to be able to turn them away, too, I think, uh, obviously. And uh, Kentucky's going to have to fill a roster. Arkansas is going to have to fill a roster. I mean, almost whole rosters there. So a lot going on. But Alabama is going to be a hot destination. So the options, they're going to have to make I guess the long way of saying they're going to have to make really tough decisions. Some of these guys are going to be talented. Yeah, Alabama more so than ever, a preferred destination among transfer portalists. You combine that maybe with an uptick in NIL, makes sense that you could be taking this roster to an even higher level. We talk about the coaching roster in the SEC with John Calipari, Tim, now at Arkansas. If Kentucky ends up with, let's say, Scott Drew of Baylor, and that's been the hot name here in the last couple of days, the Nick Saban name for Kentucky basketball is Billy Donovan. It's almost eerily similar how if Kentucky wants to make maybe a secondary run at Billy D, they're going to have to wait until these upcoming postseason scenarios play out in the NBA, kind of like Alabama had to wait back in late 2006 for Nick Saban to finish that season with the Miami Dolphins. But let's say it's Scott Drew at Kentucky, and we know Cal is at Arkansas. Uh, even with Muss moving on to Southern California, and it's the Muss bus for more than one reason. I think it's as much because it stays moving, that Muss bus. It moves every couple yeah. of years. What, what does that do in terms of the coaching roster? You're adding a national championship coach potentially at Kentucky. You're moving a national championship coach from Kentucky to Arkansas. It's uh, it's pretty stout, I would guess. Yeah, I'm a big Scott Drew fan as far as X and O's and knowing how to coach a game. Um, the, the interesting thing to me is you've got a very motivated Arkansas program. Very, very. I mean, well, it, I don't funded. know that. I don't yeah. know if that was officially a sellout for Cal's announcement, but it was jammed to the gills in their arena. 
uh, from what I saw on Twitter to introduce Cal, it was jam. I mean, it was, it was, I think it was, the like, 80s, it was Saban like it you was, know, it was, they filled it up. They filled the arena up. So, um, they're very motivated. Now, Kentucky's got to be extra motivated too, because you can't let Cal go over there and run the SEC, right? That's no. going to be a terrible look if you let Cal go over there and run the SEC. But Kentucky's always motivated to get a good coach and they'll, uh, they'll have good players. Um, but yeah, I think it ups it. I mean, Musk was, you know, the thing about the sports is like people are so, so quick to turn on you. I mean, Musk went to two elite eights. They had elite talent. They had a, they had a very subpar year, no doubt about it. Not Kentucky was surprised. I mean, Arkansas was surprised when I watched them what they look like, uh, to be honest. But I mean, the guy kind of earned the right to. Yeah, and I'm not saying they ran him off. They seemed to want to keep him, but there was a lot of hostility there, a lot of drama, a lot of off-the-field rumors. But the guy really raised the bar. I mean, the guy took his shirt off and stuff, you know, in the middle of the crowd for no reason. Uh, he was entertaining. That, that's probably part of it, though, with Muss, you know. Yeah. When it's riding that, high, that comes off great. When it doesn't, his personality seems to go the other way and, and, and grates on people. I it's think, like that scene bit. in Bull Durham where he was talking about having fungus or mold on his uh, shower shoes. You make yeah. it to the big leagues, you're eccentric. You know what I mean? Right now, you're just a nasty human being. So when you're winning, hey, you're eccentric. You know what I mean? But uh, oh, the, the yeah. interesting part would be if Scott Drew turned it down to me. Mm. What happens here? I mean, is Bruce Pearl's name in there at some point? I don't know if he is or not, but that would. I think he's got to be on that next tier. I mean, it, if he's in, if Cal unless goes Mitch to Ar- Barnhart goes Mal Moore and just waits and goes up to Chicago and camps out in Billy's driveway, I think that's I miss, the tier you're moving I would, to. I wouldn't not mind seeing Billy Donovan back in college basketball. I think he was good for college basketball. Those are good teams. I don't know how happy he is in Chicago. They're they're kind of stuck in a rut. I mean, they've invested a lot in a, a ball who's just not Lon, Lon, uh, Lonzo Ball, who just you know stayed injured for a couple of years, and a couple of their draft picks haven't really panned out. But um, I like to have him back. But for me, Drew's a a a higher, you know, an a higher might not be. I saw the Kentucky fans weren't necessarily high with them, but I will say the Kentucky search for basketball is similar to the Alabama that no matter who you mentioned. No. no, he wasn't good enough. Even Kalen DeBoer. I mean, they, we, they, you know, they, it's all forgotten now. But there was a lot of anti Kalen DeBoer. Um, you know, not he's not the guy. We don't want the guy. They went straight to you know to the 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 the, the highest coaching ranks they could, the the ratings to get somebody. But Scott Drew would be a win for them. A safe, easy, consistent coach who's going to win with talent. In my just in my opinion. Coming up on Saturday at Bryant-Denny Stadium, it's going to be a win for either the Crimson or the White. And Tim, as far as sort of how this game is going to be set up, we will hear from Kalen DeBoer post-practice later this evening on a Thursday. I would guess we'll get more information on that. Perhaps we'll get it even before then uh, throughout the day. But it does sound like, based on comments from Tyler Booker following the most recent Alabama practice that steak and beans will be on the line come Saturday afternoon and really just want to get your areas of focus. I know we talked about this positionally a little bit throughout the spring, but you know, this is a scrimmage. We anticipate quarterbacks not being alive. So you're going to have touch football in some instances, especially where pass rush is concerned that's even tougher for a position like offensive tackle where all it takes is a, 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 a run by basically to record a sack. And, you know, there are some concerns obviously within this fan base when it comes to that offensive tackle position. And even at the guard position, Jaden Roberts with the ankle injury from last Saturday, his availability up in the air, I would think for the 8 day game, that puts a young player like Rock Montgomery perhaps in line to see some work with the ones that guard, is it offensive line? Are you thinking more of the defensive side? Uh, who are kind of your picks to click on Saturday in this spring game? You know, I I don't know if I have a pick to click, but I'm pretty excited to see um, Jeremy Bernard. That's the guy I really want to see. I know the other Alabama wide receivers, I mean, it stinks about hell. I was excited. He'd have been one I was really excited to see. And, of course, Quay Russo. Keon Keeley, Yonze Pierre, guys we haven't seen. For me, 
this is all about who I haven't seen. So it's not anything against Tyler Booker. I know he's great. I know what Jalen Milrow is. I know what Jaden Robertson is and Deontay Lawson. I want to see the guys I don't know so I can educate myself, come up with some kind of feel for how they look. Um, and I'm excited to see it all. I want to see the defense, the attacking defense, which I think sounds like it's been a problem so far. Um, Justice Haynes, you know, I don't expect he'll get a ton of ton of carries out there, but I want to see a little bit of everything. I mean, this is one of the most intriguing 8A games I can remember because this is a brand new defense. Even the players we knew, do we really know them? Do we really know them? A lot of them are going to be in different positions and different roles. Keon Saab, Damani. I mean, there's so many new faces on top. Even if it was all faces we were familiar with, the system itself has changed so much, you'd have to be seeing them in a new role. But I'm pretty pumped about it. Yeah, the running backs, watching some of our practice footage from the uh, media viewing period here this week, boy, just looking at Justice Haynes and Jam Miller, Richard Young too. Richard Young looks like he's had a really good offseason the second year back from the state of Florida. So uh, that's a group I'm excited to watch. Some of these second and third year receivers, Jaron Hamilton, I want to see if he's ready to take a step forward. Emmanuel Henderson. Cole Adams, a guy that we haven't talked oh, about yeah, a lot. Another good one. And then the transfers, like you said, because the expectation is probably other than Naquil Batrond, because he's at a position that requires extensive development and he's still a young guy. Yeah, but when you think about Jeremy Bernard, you think about Josh Cuevas at tight end, then you get over on the defensive side of the ball. Guys like LT Overton. You know, you got guys like Damani Jackson that you're obviously counting on as a transfer from USC. Keon Sab, who you mentioned as well. So transfers, plug and play type of options at different positions for this football team. But we say all that and we know our biggest overreaction by nightfall Saturday, Tim, will be the quarterback position, even with a returning starter, even with a guy, when you look at power rankings for the position in CFB for 2024 and Jalen Milrow as a top five guy, all we'll want to talk about. How did the quarterbacks look? Yeah, absolutely. First pass, Ty Simpson completes. There's going to be a thread saying he's going to win a national championship for somebody. You know, Ty's got more love. You know, the backup quarterback just historically has been the most loved guy, right? But I think in this case, Simpson is a talented guy. I think he's a pure passer. We loved him out of high school. He's a natural instinct. He's a coach's kid, all of that. I mean, Austin Mack, I can't wait to see Austin Mack. Dylan, we haven't even talked about Dylan in a while. So we know what Jalen is. We know what Jalen's going to do. Um, he can be improved. I don't know how much he'll be improved in, you know, in the in the short practice sessions, but I think we'll see a different version of him. But partly like with Jalen, if he can't pull it and run it, it loses a lot of the fun of the, you know, of watching Jalen a little bit with Ty Simpson too, right? Because he's a guy that yeah. can tuck it. We saw that he can tuck it and run. So that changes it. But I do want to see him from the pocket. I want to see pure passing. I want to see um Caleb Oden. I don't even know if we mentioned him. Caleb Odom, I mean, who doesn't want to see him? So there's a list. We have a list. We probably said 20 names so far outside <laughs> of the quarterback. Outside of the quarterback, we've said 20 names. So this could be an amazing, fun adventure. But I would say I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't start doing your own depth chart and writing people off based on this game. I think what's fun about that secondary, Tim, is that there's a mix of vets and newcomers that are battling for roles. I mean, you look at corner and you've got, I'll call him a veteran. He's not a veteran of Alabama, but Damani Jackson certainly going into his third year of Power 5 football qualifies. Then you got Jalen Mbakwe, you got Zay Mincy, you got Zabian Brown at those corner spots to go along with a returning player in Jalil Hurley. You look at the back end of the safety positions and Malachi Moore back to go along with an early enrollee like Peyton Woodyard. Keon Sab also you're expecting to step right in there from the University of Michigan and do big things. And boy, that Husky position is really fascinating to me. That's essentially the star or that slot corner role in this 4-2-5 under Kane Womack. And then you've got another veteran, Devontae Smith or Red Morgan could very much be in that mix. At least that's what we've heard. Good mix of competition, good things to keep an eye on. Even 
even at the edge positions, you pull for a guy like Q Robinson, you pull for Keanu Coot because he's been around for a little while now, but then you've got a Quay Roussel going into his second year who looks like it's going to be very tough to keep off the field. You know, a guy's name I, I hear fairly frequently is Hubbard. A lot of people Bray seem Hubbard. to like Hubbard. Yeah, Bray Hubbard, safety back there. It's another one that's getting a chance. I mean, that back that back end opened up for some guys to step up. And Hubbard, you remember him? He's coming out of Mississippi. Baseball commitment. High school quarterback. Yeah. yeah, really good athlete. Went to camp, absolutely was crushing it. When you go to camp, when we get camp feedback, and it's on a guy who's on the other side of the ball, if we're hearing a defensive guy talk about an offensive guy or vice versa, that's usually a big deal. And Hubbard was really had a good camp at Alabama when he earned his offer. So he's another guy that has a chance here to, this week. I think JT83 sums it up pretty well here in the comments. The thing I'm most interested in seeing, an injury-free A-Day. There you go, JT83. You know what else we've got in connection with Saturday's A-Day game too, right? Oh, Timmy. That limited edition. Do you like how I worded that on the roundtable thread? It is a limited it. edition because it's pretty much the only one. The only one y'all ever get a shot at. <laughs> We'll send you the, the next thing you win is a link. <laughs> now, I, I did leave the sticker on it. Some folks, they like to even leave the sticker on it and wear it that way. I, I'm not one of those folks, but hey, good for you if that's your preference. But we do have the ongoing thread where we ask you to predict passing yards for Jalen Milrow. Tiebreaker is, in case it's needed, rushing yards for Justice Haynes. Get those predictions in on the roundtable thread there at BamaOnline.com, and you could win this limited edition Tim Watts Bama Online hat. Yeah, it's been popular. I don't know how many pages that is now, but it's, it's a lot of pages. It's more than our uh, actually actual content. <laughs> more than a, a war room. I jumped in and I jumped in and put a prediction in myself, which had I don't laughing, think but... I don't think BOL staff is eligible, but you kind of make the rules there. You I know, went high. So. Hey, I went like two sixty seven for Mill Road Pass, and I mean, I, I mean, if I hit it, I got to win. I mean, that's a yeah. That's you kind of went to a you went a pretty, to a two thousand seventeen. That's that a pretty pick. big passing number. Now I, I tried to hold one hand behind my back, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I was excited. I mean, they're pretty excited about that hat. Todd checking in here in the comments. I want to see the lines both sides. I like it, Todd. I'm a big line of scrimmage guy. We talked about the offensive line situation. It's been a big stretch for Elijah Pritchett. You know, we talked about this before with him. You don't typically get a lot of second windows at a place like UA. He's been afforded that opportunity. You hope for his sake it goes well. Uh, these pass rushers, even with Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell moving on, are going to be formidable. We know that. Coot, Q, Quay, hearing good things about Keon Keeley and making a bit of a position move. So that'll be a challenge, not only for Elijah Pritchett, but Will Conformby. You know, Tyler Booker post-practice, we had this, we have this, all this video, by the way, on our YouTube home, which if you haven't subscribed to the BOL YouTube channel as of yet, you need to do that right now. This show, other shows, practice interviews, post-practice interviews, Kalen DeBoer, when he speaks this evening, it's all going to be there on our YouTube channel. Um, he was non-committal about Caden Proctor returning, but that still seems to be very much on the horizon at that offensive tackle spot. Um, so for these young tackles, especially like Formby and Pritchett right now, although Formby's young enough that if it isn't this time around or 2024, th there'll probably be another go around for him. For Pritchett, you feel like this is this is really it. Yeah, I think that's his shot. I think when Proctor, everything's still status quo. I mean, there's not a lot you can say about it right now. The Alabama staff can't comment, and you're walking a thin line, but he's made his intentions known. But, yeah, we're preaching because, you know, he's got he's got that shot that one year ago in the A-Day game, you know, and, you know, obviously went out there and, you know, struggled, didn't feel like his strides were very wide. He kept, kept – uh, Robinson kept getting around him. Um, which is a tough guard for most tack inexperienced tackles to begin with because he's a guy that pins his ears back and just gets on a straight line and can beat you speed-wise. Uh, but, yeah, this is his chance. And I agree with Florin being some of the younger guys. They've still got, you know, they've still got time to improve and get where they want to go. But with Pritchett, it's kind of the clock's ticking. Um, the clock's ticking. But he's certainly got the ability. He's certainly got the size. Again, he's the – to me, he's the he's very similar to Jaden Roberts getting off the bus. He's very similar to, 
you know, looking like a gladiator, like Jaden does a transformer in his uniform. And he's big, you know, he's long, he's athletic. You know, we heard from Booker post-practice too, that he believes that the biggest thing for Elijah Pritchett is just confidence. Yeah. And, that's, you know, we typically, a lot. Yeah. we typically associate though, right? That with like quarterback or even corner because you're on that Island, so to speak. But you know what? You're on a pretty, pretty remote place when you're playing left tackle in today's game, too. Yeah, and also social media. If you're an insecure yeah. person, I mean, I'm telling you, anybody watching, if you're insecure, stay off social media because it's a, you know, it's it's vicious. And a lot of them are just playing. But if you don't know somebody and they're making fun of you, it, ain't it doesn't see like playing. People yeah. on the outside can see the joke. People on the inside often can't. Um, so that can get in your head too. If you're insecure, you can start to believe And We've actually heard stories about college athletes that were bothered by some of the social feedback he got earlier in the year. He certainly shut him up. You know what I mean? Now, he was yeah. struggling at the time, but he certainly wasn't struggling in the NCAA tournament. But yeah, there's little things that get in the head and you're like, stay off social, which is what I said, but it's not always easy. You know, they're teenagers, they're early twenties. It's kind of their thing, right. To be on some kind of social hip i don't know any adults that aren't on it honestly jamie m says if t watts wins the hat we riot so there it is there's the gone where you need to go. ride is when dustin johnson wins the masters and i did ah, no re- all i did was watch a netflix documentary and nail it that's where y'all riot any of you golf guys y'all oh, can, I, I i went straight off dude's confidence in his flat bill i'm like dude's winning it i, I don't want to think about that I really don't want to think about that. What about from a recruiting perspective real quick, Tim, before we get into some A-Day memories? Uh, I know you had a nugget for us, your guy, one of your top guys that you talked about multiple times here on the program and elsewhere. Uh, Apparently, Alabama looking like it's in better and better shape for Josiah Sharma, who hails from a high school program Alabama knows pretty well. Got a pretty good offensive tackle out of there, I think, a few years back. Yeah, they, um, you know, um, Jonah Williams, right? Yeah, Folsom. He, uh, yeah, now Folsom, that I just like the name because of Johnny Cash song, too. Heck you know yeah, what I mean? That's, yeah, I mean, it kind of sticks with you. But, yeah, big guy can move, coming from California, previously committed to Courtney Morgan and Kalen DeBoer. I think Courtney Morgan has a really good relationship there, committed to what committed to Kalen DeBoer at Washington. Coming back for that weekend trip, and, again, when you see guys like him and Jackson Lloyd – coming from California, because it's a time consuming trip to get here. I mean, it's a, you know, if you've ever flown from here to LA or to California, I mean, you're looking at a five, four and a half, five hour flight, uh, depending on which way you're going, you're in that range, plus getting to the airport and all the hassle that goes with getting to the other airport and getting to the place you're going. So, but obviously a guy, I feel pretty good. Alabama's done a really good job here. Big guy, six foot four, 320 pounds, dancing bear ability, uh, potential that big guy's got a little bit of Christian Barmore and I say that because Barmore out of high school when Bama offered him nobody was really talking about him I, I, we loved him instantly we loved his film he was raw um, that northeastern area wasn't a great high school football like feel but he was showed a lot of potential there so he's coming in pretty excited about that Andrew Bone had a great nugget on a guy another guy we love Michael Carroll coming in from Pennsylvania interior offensive lineman getting some guys to come in from, you know, around the place. They'll be the regular commitments there, but getting those guys on the offensive line, defensive line, we're seeing that shape up because, you know, we had to call Kalen DeBoer and say, Hey, I can't take any more of these linebacker jokes. <laughs> I can't take the line. Like we got, yeah. The like one nine one defense. Yeah. Somebody right. hit me yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And he said, can he play linebacker? You remember that used to be the thing used to be, can he play tight end? Any sport, any commitment, baseball, basketball, football, any sport, any commitment, the answer was, can he play tight end? And now they said, can he play play linebacker, which kind of killed me. But, yeah, it's going to be a good weekend. The visitors list still shaping up. You have a lot of guys coming in. Jaden Harmon, an absolute monster from Rome, Georgia, supposed to be there. Justin Hill, um, an edge rusher. We got a nice list. Andrew Bone, Joseph Hastings put together on the round table. Uh, still working on that. Sharma just popped up yesterday, as did Michael Carroll. We confirmed they were coming in. So people are still making their plans. There's a little bit that goes into it. You know, you talk to a player, a high school kid, and he's like, yeah, I'm going. But, you know, you really got to get those parents involved when, you, when you're coming from Pennsylvania and California. So um, these take a few days to put together. 
it seems like evaluations are even still coming together right now. Uh, and we've seen this, this staff, you talk about coast to coast, north to south, east to west. I know Lotsier Brooks, a dynamic playmaker from the northeast, is a guy that apparently has come onto the radar or perhaps had been on the radar. But, uh, again, it just seems like day to day we're learning more and more about how this staff is going to go about things and really the kind of guys that they're looking for. Yeah, I think we had a little nugget last night on Brooks and um, feel like Alabama's did a really good job there. Uh, Andrew Bone put in an RPM pick, uh, basically a crystal ball for him to commit to Alabama. No time, no date set yet. Um, three star prospect. This is kind of like these people that get upset about the three stars and worry about the three stars. Watch his film. He's fantastic. Dynamic. I mean, literally the discussion in there is whether he's Jalen Waddle or Tyreek Hill or uh uh, shoot, what's the kid's name at USC so fast? Branch. Uh, Zach uh, yeah. Branch. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the discussion. That's how quick and fast this kid is. Just a lot to like. And I, I think what this staff's done, it reminds me of the early Saban years where the evaluations were so far ahead of the rankings. And that's kind of mystified the Bama bump. You know what I mean? It wasn't a, wasn't a Bama bump. It was the, everybody catching up based on Bama's evaluation. And they were, you know, the NFL says, hey, they were right a lot of the time. Um, I think this staff does that because they've dug a lot of guys out. I mean, you see higher ranked guys that they're not pushing for. They definitely have a type. And I know they're they're obsessive film watchers. Uh, the Alabama staff is. I know they're very hands on watching film and everything. But, yeah, the A-Day, all the business have went great. A-Day will be probably not as big a list as you might have accept, expected. But they've had so many guys already come through. They've had mm -hmm. so many guys they got on campus. So getting through this one day will be big. And there'll still be some other names to pop up as well. Yeah, guys come to practice, too, and spending a day at the facility uh, throughout spring, it can be more intimate, can be more personal. You know, when you have two or 300 kids in for a game or an A-day scrimmage, it's a big thing. It's a good thing. Uh, but Sometimes that one-on-one -on -one time or that personal approach that you'd like to have maybe gets lost a little bit. Hey, Tim, maybe it's because we're both graduating into old fart status, but it seems like more and more when A-Day rolls around, I find myself thinking back to some of the more memorable A-Day performances or maybe just moments in general. I think for us, when you think about Nick Saban and he's going to be on hand Saturday, he's going to be at the uh, the Denny Chime ceremony where the captains from a year ago, at least a couple of them, are going to put their feet and hands in the cement there at the base of Denny Chimes. Hard not to think about 2007 and that first A-Day under Nick Saban and just sitting in the press box that day and watching that crowd enter the stadium, watching it from about the 50-yard line midway up, and, you know, at first, the lower bowl filled up. You're like, oh, wow, this is this is going to be a nice crowd. And then you start seeing the east upper level start to fill in a little bit. You're like, oh, wow, they even had to open up the up upper levels. And then it just never seemed to stop. The, the place literally filled up. That's the, uh, that's the impactful memory, I think, for most folks. But you know, there's been some good stuff otherwise, too. I, You know, what else I go back to is 2017, when you had Tua coming in, you had Mac coming in, you had Jerry Judy coming in, Najee Harris, and those guys didn't waste any time in getting it done in the spring game. No. I mean, that's one of the things. The quarterback battles mostly what I remember, or Nick Saban's hot mic moments, almost getting ran <laughs> over. Almost getting ran over, his hot pink. Come on. Uh, I don't salmon, know that's salmon. Pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's hot, hot pink. I'm probably not doing him enough justice. Salmon, salmon, uh, <laughs> uh, being out in the field. Those were those are kind of the things, the comical aspects of it. I've never taken the football too serious, to be honest with you. I wanted to see the quarterback battles. I wanted to see Bryce and Mac. You know, I wanted to see stuff like that. Um, but the performances, you know, a lot of people. I remember uh, that guy Hall was uh, put in the Hall of Fame off an eight yes. game, right? Yeah, literally Guy straight Hall in the, went off. Yeah, straight into the Hall of Fame. Before he really went off. And went off. I don't even know where he is. I guess he's just in the workforce, yeah. but a really talented guy. Um, had that one, you know, that one great day. So the performances don't mean as much to me. To me, it's like watching, almost like watching a high school film with multiple talented guys on it. 
where I'm just kind of watching them rewinding and watching them over and over and over and again. I mean, I don't really, you know, the touchdowns and stuff don't matter as much to me. I just want to see the individual plays and how they work in certain situations. I get the feeling Justice Haynes may be like the uh, TJ Yeldon of running back in spring games. We saw it last year. He was a touchdown machine as an early enrollee in the A-Day game a year ago. TJ loved A-Day. TJ Yeldon, three straight years from 2012 to 2014, he was the Dixie Howell Memorial Award MVP recipient. I also think the 2016, you remember Tim Williams just absolutely wrecking that yeah. spring game? It was like a 7-3 game. Nobody could block Tim Williams. But that was also Jalen's sort of Alabama debut as an early enrollee, and it Probably should have told us at the time that Blake Barnett, Cooper Bateman, those guys weren't going to be able to hold him off. Yeah, that was a good. That was a that was a pretty cloud, crowded uh, quarterback discussion back then too. You know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the eight day game for me is always going to be. That I'm hoping DeBoer has a mic and is walking around us too because some of Saban's Saban's best moments were trying, you know, trying to be PG thirteen. He's on a field and then he's on TV. So there's really, it's like us doing these live things. You know, I have to be like, be really careful <laughs> with some of my language. Remember, I was hesitant Michael to go Pettit. live. I was like, yeah. Travis yeah. is like, let's go live. I'm like, mm, I don't feel like you can edit that. I feel yeah. like, I don't think I'm, we're FCC regulated here. Yeah. It's like, dangerous. What, are, yeah. what are the rules here? Now, that 2017 A day, though, um, two it through for, I got it right here. Two it through for 313 and three touchdowns as an early enrollee. And I know there was some talk after that scrimmage. Well, he was going with the twos. I'm like, if if you couldn't watch that guy throw yeah. the football and know that that did not matter one iota, I can't really help you with that. And Jalen was great in that game, too. That was one of the spring games that was a lot of fun. It was like 27-24. Um, and Jalen took the his team down uh, the Crimson on a, a late game drive to win the game. Najee, as an early enrollee, had 107 scrimmage yards. And then you think about how that season ended. Really, those guys, they came up big. Tua, Najee, those freshmen that came in and, and really yeah. helped Alabama Smitty. get over the yeah. hump. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be excited to see it. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm probably, as, I'm excited as about eight days you can get, but I'm uh, subdued as you can get about the score. I, I actually think it's going to be low scoring. You do. I think the defense is going to be confusing as crap for the offense. That's what I think. Limited offensive linemen, limited your quarterbacks. You know, your one and two quarterbacks probably are Ty and Jalen, so you've limited their ability to run. So I just think you kind of stuck a little bullseye back there, but. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm really excited to see the wide receivers, what they can do. You mentioned Jose Cuevas, who we've heard good things about Josh, consistently. But I like Jose. Josh, yeah. Jose Cuevas. I'm saying Jose. Yeah. I'm sticking with. It. I think Josh would. I think Josh would be okay, okay. with. Okay. Well, you go with it. I'm gonna ask him when I see him. I think yeah. like, Jose. You know, that sounds good. But no. again, it would there would be nothing more fitting in the world of sports that a guy we didn't who put out like a homemade edit to say he was transferring while we were all worried about Keon Saab comes in here. And Went on is a great, yeah. yeah. Comes in here as a great, yeah. I mean, we were like, is that real? Cause you know, earlier in the last couple of days, we had people completely fake players who weren't even existing said, I'm going to Bama. So we saw that we thought, Hey, are they trying to get us again? So Nothing would be more justified than him having a uh, really good game. Here's the craziest A day I got to think that ever happened. I think there was either one or both where you had like UA uh, administrators and instructors played in the A day game, <laughs> like suited up. And then in 85, maybe this was the same one, Sounds but you had current NFL players that came back and played in the A day game. NFL players playing against the existing Alabama roster uh, in an 8 day game. You think about now with NFL PA, that could never, ever, ever happen again. But uh doesn't stop us from dreaming, I guess. Hey, uh, Tim, I think it's probably time to head to that roundtable mailbag. What do you think? Yeah, let's see how they did us this Let's week. see how they did us. Uh, Tide Hashira, faithful and significant contributor here to the Roundtable Mailbag. We really appreciate it. Who sticks out in your mind as far as the best A-Day 
by a player. We just kind of went through some of those. How much do you think we'll see of the playbook offensively, Tim? I don't think a lot. No. I think enough just to, you know, have it going out there. But I don't know, percentage-wise, I wouldn't think you'd see a whole lot. Um, as far as I, – I, if I had to pick MVPs, like, and be a little bit different, I'd probably go Quay on defense and Jeremy on offense. Um, just as guys I, I kind of want to see do well, so I'm kind of wishing that to, an, to uh, existence. But I don't think it's going to be a wide open, you know, wide open show by any display. Yeah, I think there's a couple of the awards. The Dixie Howe. Memorial MVP, which typically goes to an offensive player. Um, so I think there you're looking at a quarterback. I think Dylan Lonergan, given the opportunities that he gets, I think he'll – I just like to watch that guy throw the football. I think he's very instinctful, so I'm excited about actually seeing Dylan Lonergan on Saturday. Uh, playbook, here's the good thing, Tim. Even if we don't see a lot of it, it's going to be different than what we've seen. So it's going to feel like a lot, right, with this offense because it is going to be different in some ways. So it may feel like we're seeing a lot and not really see very yeah, much. That's at fair. All. That's Jam fair. Bama here in the mailbag. T. Wise, did you ever think you'd see a day a Bama basketball coach would turn down Kentucky? Um, I don't know. I mean, couldn't. I never in the past probably thought it, but I think now it's more realistic. Like I said earlier, I thought that like, it's not that Kentucky's not a great job. I'd still probably put it number one as in all the jobs that, uh, that, that I think the most of, I know UConn's great and there's other ones. Duke certainly is up there. I mean, I'm not saying that, but I'm being a Southern guy. Kentucky's always the one that SEC guy that jumps out to me. But I, like I said earlier, the day and age, I think the blue bloods have changed a little bit. Um, there's obviously tremendous pros were going to Kentucky, but there's also some cons. I mean, you saw a, you saw, you know, you saw a, a coach who was dominant for several years, basically ran out of there, uh, not ran out of there, but the fan base had completely turned on him. But I mean, he was dominant. He had the number two class in the nation coming in. And at one point, I think Kentucky looked about as hot as anybody in the country, right? I think we forget they went into Tennessee and beat a Tennessee team that was on all cylinders that day in Knoxville, a team that won the SEC, um, a very good Tennessee team. So I'm, I I wouldn't think I'd seen it. And I'm not saying he did turn it down or not. I'm not saying he got the offer, but Kentucky was interested. We know for sure he reached, they reached out to him. Jam Bama also give me two positions you are looking at the most for basketball transfer portal options. I think a lot of people will default to the post, right? Without yeah. knowing for sure about Grant Nelson, yeah. Nick Pringle, but sort of thinking this is where it could be headed. And as we've said, uh, and if you outlined Tim, uh, already have made a big hit at uh, one of the backcourt spots. Yeah, I think you're looking at guards and a big guy. I mean, everybody, you know, the term's pretty, you know, rim protector. I think that's a good term defensively. Offensively, they still want a guy that can shoot the ball, that can step out and hit that, you know, hit that shot. You know, that's in the ideal world. Um, you got Aiden, you know, Aiden Sherrill coming in. If you have yeah. Grant Nelson, that changes that that big man role a little bit because you have Grant who can hit the three. You've got Sherrill who's comfortable shooting the three, who needs to be more consistent, but he is an outside guy. So I'd look for that in some guards. You still got to have a lead guard. You got to have somebody bringing up the floor, whether you have Sears or not. Um, he still is going to need help bringing the ball up the floor. I think if Nelson were to come back, Tim, different position, I understand that. I think he could take a step similar to what we saw from Mark Sears from last year to this year. In other words, I don't think we saw Grant Nelson hit his ceiling. I think in some ways he is who he is. But I think in terms of the three-point shot, he could definitely – improve in that area and that would take his game uh to a higher level no doubt about it also jam bama here in the mailbag how fun is it about to be to see a lot more rotating players on defense and playing in my opinion faster than they have before i think it's fun for the players that's for sure and part of this too is it's the first spring for a new staff tim I, I do think we will see more players rotating, don't get me wrong, but there's still an evaluation process going on. So you're trying to get more guys in and out so you can get a look at more guys. Yeah, what are we, five days from the portal? You know what yeah. I mean? So there's portal in. And again, 
I'm gonna coin that phrase, portal in, portal out. I mean, you're you know, it's not, you know, it's it's good and it can be bad and it'll be neutral where it's a mutual decision for people to leave. And the one thing is you rotate, you know, I think Nick Saban, like in, in a perfect world, Nick Saban would have basically had a like a 14 man rotation. You have 11 set and then a couple of guys are going on the defensive line to give each other a rest. And that's the safest way because that guy knows his job. But I do agree, I'm excited to see. You know, I'm excited to see them wheel and deal, and I'm fully accepting they're going to give up big plays. I'm convinced they're going to give up big plays um, in these games, especially in the 8A game, where they're going to get confused and miss assignments because there's a lot going on. But I am ex- I am excited about it. Let's check in with Bama Maverick here in the mailbag. Since it is a fresh debate among some, would you want to stay with Nike or move to Jordan? Jordan is Nike. Now, I understand, Tim, Jordan Brand is a kind of a an offspring of Nike. Uh, there are Jordan Brand schools like, I think, Michigan, SC, uh, Florida, I believe, is a, a Jordan Brand. You think maybe this question is in response to Auburn moving to Nike and now Alabama maybe should look to move from Nike to an extension of it with the Jordan Brand? You know, if I had to choose, I'd go Griffey Nike. Ken Griffey Jr. I'd get that swing going on it. No, I'm just Tiger kidding. Nike. That's not a I thing do. anymore, though. No, but that, that, I always love that Griffey swing on the Nike stuff for the baseball guys. Mm-hmm. I don't have an opinion. I like Nike and the Jordan brand, obviously. My youngest son lives by the Jordan brand uh, for a big part. I didn't know it was a debate. I knew Auburn. I know I had it. I didn't, you know, sometimes I get lost. I don't really get into the 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 muck sometimes but i did have people ask me like why is auburn so excited about nike and all that because they're leaving under armor well that's what i said like i'd be excited if somebody sent me free nike gear i'd be pretty pumped i didn't know it was a, a if you're recruiting against discussion. auburn tim you wanted auburn to stay with under armor forever it, yeah. people hear me say that they think i'm crazy it absolutely matters to recruits you that's just said little, it yes. your kid is a nike guy and 99% of these young people, Tim, are Nike guys and gals. It, ma- it matters to your children. Go buy right. them Under Armour shoes instead of Nike and watch that face at Christmas. So I see it's a big deal for Auburn. I'd be excited, too. Um, I don't really care. I like the Jordan brand, um, <clears throat> but I do feel it's kind of like basketball. You know what I mean? And like just like Griffey's baseball, Tiger's golf, I do think you just stick with Nike and have them work around it. Yeah, either way, just don't leave Nike. Don't we're just in that time of year. We're at that Adidas time of year. One of these. We're just in that time of year. We're arguing. You know what I mean? We're like yeah. arguing, and it's really going to get bad when that portal closes, because then we're arguing about everything. Somebody well, say, if the or field, Coke. If the field Pepsi. doesn't look good Saturday, we'll be talking about. You know, we'll be talking about the turf. I'm gonna find out. Everybody color. criticized that field. I'm gonna ride around, take pictures <laughs> of their yard, and do a photo gallery. <laughs> There ain't, uh, there, there ain't nothing like the internet to become a to become a doctor or a play. Grass. I got played. Yes, I think that <laughs> what was that commercial? I'm not a doctor, but I slept at a Holiday Inn Express. Holiday Inn, yeah. I think that tricked a lot of people who actually went there and came out an expert. Uh-huh. But you're right, though. The grass discussion is a fun it one. It better be right. It Get it right, Great right Smith, Bill Murray. Oh gosh, B underscore Rich here in the mailbag about midway through. The SEC softball schedule, give us your thoughts on where they stand. Still seems like Murph is dialing in the outfield rotation and the batting lineup. Do you think it's important to find an everyday combo on the corner? Sure, absolutely. I think in some ways this team is what it is. I think, thank goodness for Kayla Beaver being what you hope she would be coming in as a transfer and transferring up like she did. Uh, offensively, they are, I think, limited for the most part. It was big for them to take care of business last weekend against Ole Miss, one of the worst teams in the SEC. And you say that kind of like baseball even in the SEC. You, you can say that about a team just like we saw when Alabama went to Kentucky the previous weekend and dropped two of three to a Kentucky team that certainly wasn't having a great season. So, you know, I think by Murph standards, this is a pretty average team. Pretty mediocre team. Now, I say that, and they'll go on a run, and certainly hope that's the case. But uh, personnel-wise, I think this team just kind of is what it is. Tim, you got anything to add to the softball discussion, or are we just going to keep it moving? 
You know, don't get me into softball too. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta let you have some. I, I've got you gotta, almost into golf now, so I'll take what I can get. I mean, there. we're a few hours from me actually mm -hmm. getting into the Masters and becoming mm -hmm. an expert. I mean, you saw what I did with Korean baseball. Then the whole world was talking about it. That's all. That's all I'm saying. They, you know, the cargo shorts, Korean baseball. Nick's nephew chiming in here. He, and Nick, by the way, has a posting approach that's similar similar to a, a another poster we've seen here in the mailbag, but we certainly appreciate the input. How long until we hear some news on who's staying or going with the basketball team? I don't know the usual window for those type of decisions. I guess the one that comes to mind for me in terms of you could be in this for a while with at least one or two of these guys, Tim. I think with others, we'll probably find out pretty quickly, perhaps. Charles Bediaco last year. Remember that? I mean, yeah. that wasn't a instant decision for him. I feel the same about Josh Primo, right? You know, yeah. the thing about Primo is we said, yeah. yeah, we they 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 got till May one with the portal, right? I think that's when it closes for basketball. Um, we've already seen, you know, uh, one decision for Chris Parker and there's a lot that goes into this. I mean, you know, Grant Nelson's kind of educating the world. I love Bam. I hope I'm back. I'm going to get with my agent. You know, that's the yeah. world and I'm not judging the world, but that's the world. So you got to sit down not only with parents, but with agents, you got to field offers, other schools coming in. And again, you got, you know, you got Cal just at Arkansas. You got much just at USC Kentucky jobs over. So there's a lot going on with basketball right now. There's a lot going on. Um, with all of that. So I think it'll just be a trickle effect. You know, I know Alabama's in discussion with Mark Sears, Brent Nelson, all the players. Um, so we'll see guys coming and going. I think the bigger thing is, you know, because you got to clear a little room on your roster if you add anybody else, I believe. I think they're pretty much right. maxed out. So we'll see that. We'll see that begin to trickle out. But there's not a set time frame. But for the portal, I believe it closes on May 1st. Nick's nephew also in here. Any chance DeBoer goes with a two quarterback system if he really likes two guys? Is there any history of him doing this? I, I don't, I can't recall, uh, you know, and maybe if you go way, way back with DeBoer, uh, whether it was Indiana, it wasn't his preference. I mean, because obviously uh, at Indiana and at Washington, it was Michael Penix Jr., but even at Fresno, um, most of these guys these days, they don't, uh, they don't want to go with two quarterbacks. Even if you really like two guys, yeah. um, they prefer the one guy to be the primary option, Tim. I agree. I wouldn't expect to see a two quarter. I don't know. Has anybody had a two quarterback system lately? Nick's nephew, you guys mentioned that the new roadhouse remake was terrible. That is correct. Nick, uh, yeah. are there any movie remakes that you liked better than the original or liked at all? Any remakes, Tim? Because mm. I'm struggling. I can't think of any. Um, <laughs> I know there has to be. I've seen what I tell you what, where I find a lot of good value is when you find a movie made in another country and then made here. I think that's I, if you consider that a remake. I don't think Americans remake their own movies worth a crap. I mean, Point Break was not Point Break. Uh, Roadhouse was a horror story, you know what I mean? It was, it was uh, but I do find a lot of movies, you know, I'll watch, you know, a lot of foreign title movies, subtitle movies, and I'll watch it and I'll get about 30 minutes in. I'm like, this sounds familiar. This feels familiar. And I'll Google it. And it's a movie made in America. You know, we have an American version where they just sort of Americanized it. I don't know if that's a word, but it ought to be. So I can't think of any remakes off the top of my head. Maybe some of the, uh, I got go one. Way, I got way one. Back. No, yeah, I got one. I got one. The Fly. The Fly okay. is a good remake. That was an old Vincent Price movie. They read it, redid it with Jeff Goldblum. Um, and that was a very underappreciated horror movie. That was a really good one. Uh, but I'm not drawing, you know, my mind kind of went to the uh, sequels instead of the remakes. I'd have to research. What about that. the uh, the the Superman remake with Christopher uh, passed away? Had the, Christopher Reeve? Yeah. Um, any of those? I love the original. I mean, dude's running by a train. It's the funniest thing I ever. He's yeah. literally on a glider running by the train. I like the original ones. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that the the technology is definitely dated. There, uh, but there I think are, a lot there are some movies like when Harry met Sally that utilized a formula in some ways from the foregone uh, or the previous eras, right? Of rom coms or just felt like more 
old school cinema uh, in how they were made. But I, I don't know if they were technically remakes or anything. So yeah, some of them walk a thin line and, and change it just a little bit. But a lot, like a lot of the movies, you know, when, when when you and I were growing up, a lot of the movies that were that were good that they remade. Um, I just don't think they did a you know particularly good job of it. Point Break and Roadhouse certainly stand out, but um, the Karate Kid. What the friggin' heck happened to the Karate Kid? The whole movie changed uh, consistently. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just hard to remake it. You know, with Roadhouse, they should have just. It had a good enough t- cast and setting. They should have just named it something else and let Jake push it like he does other movies. Uh, like it a lover or lover here in the mailbag. Heard any names that could replace Alabama men's basketball assistant Austin Conch? One and done at Alabama for Austin. I believe he's headed to UTSA. Tim, you hear any names in that regard? That's a, that's a good question. I just, you know, we spent the early part of the week just making sure the head coach stayed. <laughs> we we're trying to make sure we didn't have to worry about a replacement there. But no, we'll dig in a little bit. I have not heard a lot. And I imagine, I mean, these guys played. I mean, it seems like a long time ago. The Final Four game was Thursday. The final was Monday. The portal window's open. They're having discussions with their guys. You know, they're you know they're they're rallying the troops, so to speak, getting their ducks in a row um, before all that comes into play. But I imagine they've got somebody in mind that they're going to talk to. Yeah, Nate. He was on a show called The Road to Sixty Eight, I believe it is, with Jeff Goodman. And he told those guys that if any assistant even contacted him while Alabama was still playing, including at the final four, they would be automatically removed from consideration. So he's been all in for sure up through last weekend. And I'm sure he's already moving forward perhaps in some regard with that opening and he'll have no shortage of candidates because it looks like, well, if you work for Nate Oates, you're headed to a division one head coaching job pretty quickly. Uh, CEH for Bama here in the mailbag. Who has surprised you the most in limited practice viewing sessions for the spring? Who will be the most improved football player on the team? And what are the winning numbers for that hat, Travis Ryer? I need a cheat code. I, I, I can't help you with that one. Although I will say CEH for Bama has been consistent about the hat thing, Tim. But in terms of surprises to this point in the spring, who would you have on that list? Um, I don't know that I've had one. I haven't actually been to a practice. The video is pretty normal. Um, I've seen some highlight plays. Kobe Prentice has looked in small doses. He certainly looked the part. Uh, we know he has the potential there. Yeah, I think you probably look at some of the early enrollees, right? Red Morgan, um, you know, in terms of his involvement to this point, that's probably probably where it would start for me. Also on that movie thing, Tim, Tex Tider chimes in. Sinatra's Ocean Eleven I, was okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty Courtney good, Hill. Tex. Very good. You did it. Yeah, that's yeah, excellent. Nice job, yeah. Tex, on that yeah. one. Yeah, Ocean's Eleven's cast alone, the new one is incredible how deep that cast was and the closeout scene in front of the Bellagio. Yeah. Um, the waterworks was excellent. Um, three questions from Erwin M. Fletcher. How miserable does a situation have to be for someone to walk away from 33 million to get out of it? <laughs> a la coach Cal. I think that was pretty miserable for all of all parties involved. It sounded like Tim. Surely he got paid somehow, right? Surely he didn't just leave. I don't think if he left, he got nothing. No, I'm in I'm in Arkansas. There has to be some. There has to be something there to cover. He's still taking about a million a year pay cut. That's what I'm saying. He took a million a year pay cut. Walked away from 33 million. There has to be stocks and Walmart. There has to be ice and chicken. Yeah, Yeah, there has to be free, you know, Tyson Nuggets for life or something, right? There's got to there's got to be something there, but yeah, you walk away from that. I mean that that was one of the funnest moments. That hour and a half, two hours in a thread discussing Cal's going to uh, Arkansas possibly from it going. I had thought it had I thought it was crazy to even think about for because of the 33 million, but to have it go so quick to it was co- it was happening that was pretty fun. You know, I think Kentucky folks felt like they were a winner in all this, and so was Cal in some ways. I think, but. As we talked about earlier, if this situation gets beyond Scott Drew and also Billy Donovan, 
I don't know, maybe Pearl is a is a nice parachute pick or, or coach of that level uh, somewhere down the road. I think I think Bruce would fit in well there at UK. I'm a Bruce Pearl fan. I always yeah, like him. I, like I, think, I, think, I think he could do really well at Kentucky, yeah. Well, if he leaves, I hope he stays in the SEC. I enjoy seeing him and yeah. Nate on the same sideline. I enjoy the – uh, the theatrics that went with it, the emotions that with, with went with it. I know why Alabama fans don't like him, um, but they would love him if he was at Alabama. If Bruce Pearl is Alabama coach, I definitely think the fans would like him and rally around him. And most yep. people, it's kind of that way with Bruce Pearl. Where he's at, they love him um, unquestionably. And if they, you know, if you're not there and you're playing against him, you're yelling at him for yelling at you. Irwin, also, what is your prediction for the biggest BOL board overreaction after the 8A game? We talked about quarterback earlier. I think coin, that's a natural. Coin flip. Coin flip. All right. Who called heads? They're going to freak out. No, I'm just kidding. I'll give you uh, another low-key one because I'm special teams guy here on the show, as we know. Uh, the kicker situation. If Connor Chris, Talty and those kickers go like over on Saturday with Will Reichard that. moving on. Don't Ooh. say that. I know, well, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Don't you know, talk it into existence. I'm not trying to, not at all. I'm okay, negative. And, I'm taking that off <laughs> right edit, now. I'm, edit. Will, I'm unwilling. Mark I'm it unwilling. and cut. Cut. You're uh, right. Ir Irwin also here in the in the mailbag. With his law background, Jimmy has to be in the Brian Epstein role as the manager of the group, of the Beatles, so to speak. So choosing from TR, T. Watts, Bone, and JoJo, who is Paul, who is yeah. John, who is George, and who is Ringo? If uh, we're talking about a, a sort of Beatles formation here, Tim. Uh, you know, first of all, Erwin, now we got to deal with Charlie because you left you him out. You cannot leave Charlie. Well, And, that, and we know how Charlie gets. Yeah, but like all this. right. Charlie would never be in a band with us. Charlie's a solo. Charlie's actor. got a guitar. But he's he right would be in his background when he, he does would be show. Dave Matthews. He'd be the Charlie Potter yeah. band. He's not yeah. going to be one of the Beatles. Yeah, instead of Charlie he's Daniels, the, could be Charlie Matthews. Charlie Potter yeah. band. That's what that yeah. would be. Charlie he, Crockett, shout yes. out. And if he opened or, or was, are we open for him, he wouldn't even speak to us backstage. <laughs> He'd boo us from the sideline. I have no idea who is. Oh, uh, Tex, don't do this. You see what? Oh, tech, no. Oh, we'll see, never. Now this is why I don't want to go live. This is why I don't want to go live. Uh, that's just, Potter wow. He sees this. He's heading Hey, to Charlie, Texas. that wasn't us. Charlie, that wasn't we us, not, Charlie. We did not do it. Oh, geez. Um, Tex went there. I, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, Jeez. I mean. Tim would have to be like, I think Tim would have to be Paul. Um, Who's the angriest, you know? Well, John was pretty angry. So maybe you're John. I might be John. I had some. I yeah. guess I would be, I would rather be who I would rather be is Ringo. He seemed like he had the most fun, you know? That's got to um, be Joseph though, right? Bone can be Paul. Yeah, Bone can be Paul. You can be John. George uh, is the best one, though, right? He's probably the most. I George is my favorite Beatle. George yes. is my favorite. And he Beatle. learned to play that instrument. I can't say the name. The, I have to always look it up. That guitar big, or whatever. Yeah. 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 Pretty pretty stout. He got deep into it. He got deep. Had into some it. really good lyrics to a lot of his songs yes. too. So. Solo. Yeah. Sweet Lord and Here yeah. Comes Sweet the Sun. Lord's, yeah. I Sweet Lord. Yeah, that's fantastic. Erwin also says, by the way, you're one of the few podcasts I've set to automatically play Thank next you. as soon as a new one is released. And I always look forward to it. Keep up the good work. Thank you, yeah. Erwin. We, M. Hey, we we appreciate that. And everybody that watches and asks the questions, the mailbag uh, is one of this is kind of a slow time of year or in theory based on the calendar. But there's plenty of questions. We enjoy them. We certainly have fun with it. Me and Travis getting out here and uh, yeah. sharing our stories. Pissing off Charlie. Um, Bama like on that. three <laughs> rounds out that. the mailbag with, what players do you see us potentially targeting in the transfer portal? What odds would you lay on Sears returning, Nelson returning? So I guess this is basketball related, and we've already touched on some of this, but primarily Sears with this, Tim, Sears and or Nelson coming back. I think there's a chance both could leave to be clear, but I think there's greater chances both stay. Ooh, um, wow. Well, I want to I want to say that, that I do I think it's fluid, which I know is a running joke, but it is often fluid. There's a lot of 
a lot of things in play. There'd be a lot of things in play regardless, but when you add the portal, you add the NIL, um, obviously the NBA, NBA draft, what's the feedback, you know, and it doesn't matter what we think on the round table. I mean, people, you know, some people have an opinion. Um, I go back to the NBA. So crazy. You remember Andrew Bynum? Andrew Bynum was a lottery pick by the Lakers who wasn't invited to the NBA draft and sat in the stands. And when they caught, he knew he was in the stands. He knew something. And he basically just stepped over the rope to go meet the commissioner when that happened. So sometimes, you know, I'm not saying that'll happen with them, but um, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I think there's a greater chance of them coming back than leaving, but I want to acknowledge there is a chance they could leave. Uh, one final one or a couple of them in the comments before we get out of here, Tim. Uh, Jason Sturkey here asks, do we know who all will play center on Saturday? Well, we know that James Brockermeyer's had a nice spring. Parker Brailsford is out for the time being. Joseph Ionata, Joe Ionata as a early enrollee has worked at center. I believe William Sanders, another early enrollee, Tim, also in that mix. And perhaps even a guy like Rock Montgomery, I think, uh, could do that if you needed him to. So those would be the, the options, I think, that you would be contemplating at the center position. Also, Kathy Woody wanted to chime in here on that Beatles uh, formation. Joseph is George. I agree with that. I can see JoJo as George. And she says, Clint is Charlie's manager. Wow. I mean, what did Clint do to you, Kathy? Clint's out here catching. We thought catching strays. At least she got Charlie off the, uh, Charlie off the snide. Uh, he's got a manager. <laughs> so he's feeling a little bit. Yeah. Charlie will be, yeah. Charlie will be pretty good with that. For the sure. thing about Joseph and Ringo is like, which one's the most likely to go see Spider-Man 20 times, which beetle, is most likely to see Spider-Man 20 times, probably in I, a row. I think of Joseph, I know, you know, he can, um, you know, he can have his moments, but he just seems just like a good dude, you know, just, oh, just he, wants the best for everybody. Pretty peaceful dude. That's where I get Joseph, the, the George Joseph, vibes for Jojo. Joseph wants peace. There's no doubt yes. about it. Me and yes. Andrew don't give it to him, but he wants, uh, <laughs> he wants the peace. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And we want to thank you for joining us right here for T. Watts and TR on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, we certainly hope you'll do that. Hit the like button for us. That helps us out. We'd appreciate that. Turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our YouTube content as it drops right here. And of course, the round table at BamaOnline.com. That's where you want to hang out with Tim, myself, Andrew Bone, Joseph Hastings, Charlie Potter, Clint Lamb, Jimmy Stein. The list goes on and on. Tim, anything else before we get out of here? No, we're looking forward to talking to you guys Monday. Um, see if there's any breaking news over the next between now and Monday. You will see it here on the round, uh, not on the round. It will be on the round table on BOL, but also on the BOL podcast. And um, looking you forward to, to A Day and the preview and the preview. 50,000 or more. The breakdown. You you predicting 50,000 plus for A Day Saturday? I okay. I do. I think so too. I do. I think so too. I think it'll be a good crowd. I think they yep. should be there if they can be there. There you go. Tim Watts, Travis Ryer, thanking you once again for joining us right here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. And until next time, so long, everybody.